past two years have been tremendously challenging, but they've also given us an opportunity to clearly demonstrate our Navy's resilience, commitment and agility. Our motto is to fight and win at sea. However, the reality over the last two years is that we've been fighting and winning against COVID, we've been fighting and winning against bushfires, and we've been fighting and winning in our contribution to government's response to a number of challenges that would not normally involve our Navy. If you had asked me three years ago, would Navy people be manning vehicle checkpoints at the Victorian New South Wales border, standing in snow up to their knees, I would have said, that's ridiculous. But that's exactly what we've done. We've used warships to evacuate Australians in times of need from coastal towns under threat from bushfire. We have risen and met the challenges as an agile and thinking Navy, and it has made us stronger and more resilient. But this has not come without costs. Many of our people have been away from their families and friends for long periods. And again, many people will not be able to get home for the festive season. You have made a tremendous commitment and continue to deliver against our five Navy outcomes. And I thank you all for your outstanding work. I also send my heartfelt thanks to your families and friends. We would not be able to do what we do without their love, support and their resilience. While COVID brought further challenges in 2021, Navy successfully balanced major deployments, support to Operation COVID Assist and our ongoing guardianship of Australia's maritime approaches through Operation Resolute. About 4,730 Navy people, or about 30% of our workforce, took part in the national response to COVID. Similarly, Navy undertook innovative contactless deployments and operations, including Indo-Pacific Endeavour 21, Talisman Sabre 21, and a number of other activities that have strengthened our relationships and our friendships with our regional partners. These operations and exercises send an important and clear message that despite the global challenges of our time, we share an enduring commitment to work together for a peaceful, stable and prosperous Indo-Pacific. Our fleet achieved a number of significant milestones this year and it continues to evolve and grow. Both auxiliary oil replenishment ships, HMA ships supply and stalwart were commissioned into service this year. They will enable the joint force to remain at sea for enduring periods and allow our task groups to travel further and for longer. We also had the government announcement in September that nuclear powered submarines will be acquired for our Navy. This was the single most consequential capability decision, certainly in my lifetime, and it will shape the direction of our Navy forevermore. Nuclear-powered submarines maintain superior characteristics of stealth, speed, manoeuvrability, survivability and almost limitless endurance when compared to conventional submarines. I thank everyone who worked on the Attack Class program and welcome the extensive work that will be done by the Nuclear-Powered Submarine Task Force to determine the optimal pathway to achieve this new capability. As we acquire these and other new capabilities over the coming decades, our Navy must continue to grow and evolve. There will be new roles and opportunities for our people to specialise, including in cutting edge robotics, autonomous systems, artificial intelligence and nuclear engineering. We are in great shape for this transition, with the largest Navy that we've had since 1993 and thousands of more men and women currently under training. We are already gearing up for a very busy 2022. With Sea Power, RIMPAC, Exercise Kakadu, regional presence deployments, and of course, Indo-Pacific Endeavour. I want you all to take the opportunity for some very well-deserved leave and enjoy some downtime among your loved ones and stay safe and come back fresh in 2022. I wish you all a relaxing, safe and very happy holiday season.